Okay, let's talk in this video about microemulsion synthesis and the theory behind microemulsion synthesis. Uh, so, for example, let's let's look at a system where we've got a water in oil microemulsion. We sometimes call these reverse micelles. Okay, so these are our water droplets, our aqueous droplets in our oil phase. Okay, if you've just got plain water droplets and they collide together, remember micelles are dynamic. If they collide together and then just split apart. Uh, then they're just going to stay as water droplets, they're going to be then bigger water droplets and then go back to being smaller ones. Okay, if you've got uh, two beakers and in one beaker you've got your surfactant, your oil phase, sorry, so for example hexane, within the hexane you've got water droplets that contain, for example, gold chloride and then in your second beaker you've got uh, hexane that's got aqueous droplets containing, for example, sodium borohydride, okay, so a second, uh, a second phase then what happens when you mix those two beakers together, you've got your micelles containing your A reagent and you've got your micelles containing your B reagent and if they collide together and the contents mix, then A and B are gonna to react together. Okay, so if A, as I said, is something like gold chloride and B is something like sodium borohydride, the sodium borohydride is gonna reduce that gold, those gold plus ions to, to uh, AU0. The gold zeros are gonna then nucleate together to make uh, nanoparticles. Okay, so you've got your A reagent, your B reagent, the micelles collide, the contents mix, they split apart, and what you've got is an equilibrium distribution of all your reactants. If those reactants then react together to make your AB product, um, those are then distributed within your uh, micelles that are split apart. And if AB is something that is solid, so gold, for example, is a solid uh, material, then you're going to get nucleation of that solid within that micelle. Okay, so it's analogous to that boundary organized biomineralization <clears throat> that we've talked about. Okay, so you've created essentially a little tiny region in which your, uh, your solid material, so for example, gold can precipitate within. It can't precipitate and grow and continuously get bigger and bigger. It's only got a confined space and uh, a limited amount of, uh, of precursor to actually do that nucleation and growth. Okay, so the growth is, uh, is limited. Okay, so essentially a microemulsion droplet is a uh, is a nano reactor. Okay, so looking at the factors that can affect uh, particle size. Okay, so there are lots of factors that can affect particle size in a uh, micromulsion synthesis. So, for example, this is synthesis of gold nanoparticles. Now, one thing to note here: it doesn't necessarily um, the so normally what what happens within these systems is the the, the factors that affect uh, particle size, what you're actually doing, you're tailoring these factors to actually affect the size of the microemulsion droplets. So for example, you might have one microemulsion where the droplets are say 50 nanometers, uh, and you might have another mic microemulsion with different um, uh, components or different ratios of things where the droplets are a different size. Okay, and the, the size of the microemulsion, you can actually make the various techniques by which um, you can measure the size of microemulsion, so small angle neutron scattering, for example, uh, and then you can measure the size of the nanoparticles that come off. And if you've got big microemulsions, they don't necessarily always tally to nanoparticles of that exact size. Okay, it's often we find with microemulsion systems uh, that they're actually a little bit more complex than just the size of the microemulsion droplet means that you get that size of nanoparticle. Okay, so it, it's, it's a little hard to sort of say exactly what size of nanoparticle you, you're going to get from a certain size of, uh, of microemulsion droplet. But all of these factors which affect the uh, microemulsion droplet size will then go on to affect the particle size of the nanoparticles you are making in that micro, micro emulsion droplet. Okay, so the sort of things that can... Um, uh, that can um, uh, affect uh, microemulsion droplet size and thus have an influence on microemulsion on particle size in microemulsion synthesis. Uh, one is solvent. Again, okay, there's an error here that it should be if the surfactant tail. So if the surfactant tail interacts very well with the solvent, uh, it might be able to uh, stabilize the particle better. Okay, so when we talk about um, stabilizing the particle, if you remember back to uh, when we talked about biomineralization, we said certain additives can absorb to the growing face of a crystal and restrict the growth of that crystal. Okay, so really what we're doing is stabilizing that particle better, uh, restricting 
uh, the growth of that particle within that micromolten droplet. Okay, so the nature of the solvent, so the oil phase, so it could be hexane or octane or decane, uh, lots of different uh, solvents that you could use, and the one that you choose could affect the particle size of your uh, micromolten droplet. Okay, there's something called the W value, and that's the ratio of water to surfactant. Okay, and again, it's not a case of, of, of sort of saying, okay, well, this specific water to surfactant ratio will give you large uh, large droplets or small droplets, and those will then give you a certain size. It's a case of saying, okay, well, if we if we vary the water to surfactant droplet, we can observe in our system, the water to surfactant ratio, sorry, we can observe in our systems that say in one system you maybe get larger particles, in another one you get medium-sized particles, and in another one you get really tiny ones, okay? But again, it doesn't necessarily tally to the exact size of the droplets that you've got. Okay, so W value, that's your water to surfactant ratio. Okay, so more surfactant, is likely to stabilize uh, your droplets uh, really well. Um, uh, less surfactant, uh, you might get droplets that say coalesce together more quickly, or you might get larger droplets, okay? Um, type of surfactant and co-surfactant, okay? So we talked about CTAB in, uh, in one of the other videos, okay? So CTAB is an example of a uh, surfactant. You might get surfactants that have, say, polar head groups that involve uh, say, for example, hydroxors or sulfonates. There's lots of different surfactants out there, and the type of that uh, surfactant is going to change the, the nature of your micelle droplets and the chemistry that goes on when you, when you do your micromotion synthesis and when you do your precipitation. Okay, something you can also do is have co-surfactants. So you might have a micelle where you've got your normal surfactant uh, that's stabilising that micelle. Let's just draw it like this. Uh, and then you might have a different surfactant mixed in that's then changing the nature of your micelle droplets uh, and also then changing the nature of the chemistry that goes on inside. Okay, so there's, there's various systems where people use combinations of different surfactants to achieve certain effects in micromotion synthesis. Uh, okay, uh, and then finally reagent concentration. So the concentration of your your A and your B reagents in the micromolten droplets is going to affect the, the particles that, um, that come out there. And that's really just on your familiar uh, considerations of um, supersaturation. Okay, so to get precipitation, you need to be above a certain level of supersaturation. Okay, so if it's dilute or if it's uh, concentrated, it's going to affect how your uh, solid precipitates out of that solution that you've made uh, and... Um, uh, and, and that might then influence, uh, for example, your particle size or shape, okay? So the sort of chemistry that you can do in a micromotion synthesis, so I've already mentioned metals by reduction, so for example, uh, gold chloride and a reducing agent, something like sodium boron hydride, is going to produce gold nanoparticles, okay? People make metal oxides by uh, co-precipitation reactions in micromotion droplets, so what you might have in one beaker is your micromotion droplets that contain um, uh, an aqueous metal salt, for example. So uh, let's go for um, you know, cobalt nitrate or something, for example. You've got another beaker where you've got your oil phase and then your droplets containing, for example, something like ammonium hydroxide. Okay, If you combine those together, the micromicelles are going to mix. You're going to get your cobalt nitrate and your ammonium hydroxide and you're going to precipitate out uh, cobalt oxide nanoparticles. Okay, those are just two examples. There's loads of types of chemistry you can do in these systems, uh, and it is used um, really widely in making uh, various types of nanoparticles of metals, metal oxides, and other types of materials.